Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Joe from Strat Baseball History, bringing you our second Sunday game, the 7 p.m. game, <coughs> with Oscar the Barking Dog and Minnesota and Kansas City. The Kansas City Athletics will host the Minnesota Twins for the third game of their early opening season series. On the mound for the Athletics is going to be Jerry Walker. Walker? Eight and nine and twenty-one starts with a five point nine zero ERA, hundred and sixty-five hits allowed and hundred and forty-three innings pitched, seventy-eight walks and only fifty-seven strikeouts, twenty-seven home runs allowed. Walker is a liability in the Kansas City Athletics rotation. He'll be facing a Minnesota Twins lineup of center fielder Lenny Green, first baseman Vic Power, third baseman Rich Rollins. Left fielder Harmon Killebrew, right fielder Bob Allison, catcher Earl Batty, second baseman Bernie Allen, and shortstop Zolo Versailles. The pitcher for Minnesota today and batting ninth will be Camilo Pasquale. Without further ado, the game begins with a Jerry Walker pitch to center fielder Lenny Green. That is a 3 7 ground ball to first base. B. Cyborn over to Walker for the first out. Vic Power to the plate. 4-6. That's a ground ball to second to Jerry Lump. Lump is a 2. I guess it's Lumpy. Either way, they've probably changed their name by now. <clears throat> Lumpy handles it, and that's the second out. 4-3. Here's Rich Rollins. Two outs, nobody on for Minnesota. A 4-7, that's a base hit. Rollins keeps the inning alive. He's a D-stealer, so he's not going anywhere, but he gives the big power hitter, Harmon Killebrew, a chance with two outs. Walker deals to Killebrew, a 5-8. Fly ball to center, and that ends the first inning. Minnesota fails to score, and Kansas City coming up. On the mound for the Twins today, Camilo Pasquale. A 20-game winner in 62, 20 and 11, a 3.32 ERA and 33 starts. 236 allowed and 258 innings, 206 strikeouts to only 59 walks, and 25 home runs allowed. He's basically the anti-Jerry Walker. The lineup for the Athletics today, shortstop Dick Hauser, center fielder Jose Tartable, second baseman Jerry Lumpy, first base Norman Cyburn, right fielder Gino Simoli, Left fielder, George Alusik. Third baseman, Ed Charles. And catcher, Haywood Sullivan. And of course, batting ninth, the pitcher, Jerry Walker. Pasquale is ready. Hauser is ready. And here's the first pitch of the bottom of the first. That is a 4-7. Single 1-8 to eight or a line out to third. That's a base hit for Hauser to lead things off. He's an ace dealer, but if they hold him on, that's a minus 5 with Batty's minus 3 arm. So... They will hold Hauser, and he will not try to steal just yet. Cardable comes to the plate. That's a 2-3 line drive right at the second baseman, Allen. Allen takes it, and that's the first out. Jerry Lumpy up next. Hauser perched at first, being held close. A 1-4 is a lofted fly ball out to right field. Bob Allison roams over. And takes care of the second out. So Kansas City down to their final out in the bottom of the first. And Norm Cybern comes to the plate. Cybern a very good hitter. About a 3-7. This time he draws a walk. Pascal was, Pasquale was careful with him. And now it's first and second. Two men out. And Gino Simoli will come to the plate. Simoli gets his batting glove tangled. We untangle it. Put the cards back on the desk. And Pasquale deals. 3-7. The fly ball out to left. Killebrew roams over. Easy play. And that's the end of the first. No score for either team. The Athletics leave a couple on base. And Walker will face Allison, Batty, and Allen in the top of the second. Here's Bob Allison leading off. A 1-12. Fly ball to left field. No problem for Alusik. And there's one down for Minnesota. The catcher, Batty. Two up, 1-6. He grounds this one down to third. Ed Charles makes the play over to Cyburn at first. There are two quick outs. 
Walker back on the mound, and he'll deal to second baseman Bernie Allen. 5-4. That's a ground ball down to third. Ed Charles is a three. We'll roll an eight and consult the chart to see how Charles handles it. He will handle it just fine. A 5-3 and a 1-2-3 inning here for Minnesota. <clears throat> we go to the bottom of the second. Still no score. Pasqual faces Elusic to lead things off. George limbers the bat and gets ready for the pitch. It's a 6-4. Fly ball to center. Green's a 2. 15 on the 2. Single and an error. Batter to second. So that one gets down for Elusic. And then Green can't pick it up. Elusic ends up at second with nobody out. Ed Charles do up. Charles a professional hitter. Ready for the pitch from Pasquale, thinking about an RBI to get his team ahead. About a 6-8. Instead, he lofts this one out to left, where Killebrew will handle it for the first out. That brings up the catcher, Haywood Sullivan. Pasquale pitches. That is a 5-7. A Grounder to second. Allen's a 2. 20 on the second base. 2 chart is an out, with the runners advancing one base. So 4-3 to retire Sullivan. Elusic over to third with two outs. It'll be up to Jerry Walker, a good hitting pitcher. He gets the pitcher eight card as a hitter with two outs and Elusic on third. Pasquale goes after him. It was a 6-7. Fly ball to right field. Allison over and takes it for the third out. So they threaten, but they leave a man on again. And after two, no score. Roll over Sai. Versal. I still don't know how to say his name. Zoilio Versales. For the uneducated, like me, Jerry Walker deals. The shortstop is ready. 6 9. Grounds back to his counterpart at short. Hauser picks it up, throws it over to Cyburn, and that is the first out. Pasquale, also a good hitting pitcher, up next with one out. Walker deals to him. It's a 4 5 and gets him swinging. Two down. Jerry Walker trying to shake off his pre-game uh, uh, derision that was thrown at him. Here's Green, 0 for 1 on the day. That's a 5-5. Grounder back to second, over to first for the third out. Well, another 1-2-3 inning for Walker. Minnesota does not threaten. And the top of the order coming up for the Athletics. In the bottom of the third against Pasquale. Here's Dick Hauser. Single to lead off the game back in the first. Pasquale deals a 4-8 down on strikes. Jose Tartable 0 for 1 today. Popped it up on the infield his first time up. Pasquale with the pitch. How about a 1-3. Grounder down to second. Allen over to power. And there are two away. Jerry Lumpy comes up. He lofted the fly ball to right his first time up. This time, a 3-6. Grounder to short. Rissal over to power. A 1-2-3 inning this time for the Athletics. And through three innings, nobody has put a crooked number on the scoreboard yet. Here's Vic Power leading off the fourth against Jerry Walker for the Twins. How about a 3-8? He pops this one up on the infield. Hauser roams over and takes it for the first out. Rich Rollins, one for one on the day. Batting with one out. They fly ball over to center. No problem for Tartable, and there are two away. Here's Killebrew trying to make something happen for Minnesota against Walker, who's pitched well so far. That's going to be a 1-6. Oh, Walker walks him. Killebrew, a very patient bat, not going to swing at something outside the zone yet, generally. And does a good job there drawing a walk. So he's on first, anchored there with his E-stealing, and Bob Allison comes up. 0 for 1 so far on the day. 5, 7. Well, make it 1 for 2. Allison with a base hit. Killebrew strides to second easily, and holds there with two outs, to give Earl Batty an RBI chance. Batty grounded out his first time up. Walker deals. 1-6. He's going to ground out again. Same place. Over to third. 
And that will end the fourth for the Twins. No score, they leave two men on. The Athletics sending the heart of their order up in the bottom of the fourth against Camilo Pascual. Uh, Cybern, Samuli, and Alusic due to hit. Here's Cybern. He walked his first time up. About a 3-2. That's a line out first. Nobody else on base, so the, as many as possible does not matter. And there's one away. Gino Samoli, 0 for 1 on the day. How about a 2 8? He's going to ground this one down to Rollins at third. Throws it over to Vic Power for the second out. And here is uh, George Alusic. A single and was stranded on third back in the second. Pasquale deals the pitch. 4 7. Single 1 to 8 or a line out to third. The 10 means a line out to third. So Rollins is able to make the play on that one. And Kansas City goes down 1 2 3. Game moving right along here, folks. No score through four. Bernie Allen will lead off against Walker for the Twins. Here's a 2 10. He pops him up on the infield, and Jerry Lumpy will move over under it and snag it for the first out. The shortstop, Versal, coming up. We're going to say his name different every time he comes up. Walker deals, and it is a 2 9. This one's a ground ball, the shortstop. Hauser. Over to Seaburn for the out. And now it'll be Pasquale batting with two outs here in the bottom of the, uh, sorry, the top of the fifth for the Twins. How about a 4-7? There's a base hit. Camilla waited on that one and flicked it over the infielders for a two-out base hit. We'll give Lenny Green a chance to bat. Walker deals and Green, 2-9. Well, that's his good column. A triple one, single two to 20. It's going to get down. The outfield cuts it off. Gets it in quickly. Pasquale was off on contact. And ends up at third. So it's first and third. Green's a C-stealing. They will not hold him. Gives him a 1-12 to chance to steal second. But with two outs, they're going to let Vic Power try to get a base hit and drive in a run. How about a 3-8? He does not. He pops this one up on a shortstop. Hauser is over and ends it. So two men left on here in the fifth. Minnesota still scoreless. Kansas City coming up and trying to change their zero to something other than. Pasquale to deal to Ed Charles to leave the inning off. The third baseman Charles 0 for 1 on the day. How about a 6-6? Six, six. There's a base hit. Double 1 to 12, single 13 to 20. That's going to get in the gap. And Charles will pull into second standing up with a leadoff double. He's an ace dealer. He'll be pretty limited by Batty's arm, so he probably won't go anywhere. But Haywood Sullivan is going to try to get the runner in before the pitcher Walker comes up to bat. Pasquale deals to Sullivan. That's a 6-10. Grounder to second. He'll have no choice but to take the out at first. Charles will move over to third. Now they have to pull the runners in. Against Pasquale, who could bunt, but he's also a good hitting threat. In any case, they have to try to cut off this run in a tight game. So Pasquale will deal to Jerry Walker. Good hitting pitcher, 0 for 1 on the day. 2-3, uh-oh. Walker gets a hold of this one. That one is deep. It's a home run 1-16 to or a double 17-20. to Where will the dice lie? That's a home run for the pitcher, Jerry Walker. A two-run shot, and the Kansas City Athletics have jumped out in front here in the fifth. Two to nothing. The Walker pitching well today and now helping himself with the bat. He's doing everything he can to shake his preseason predictions of being a liability on this staff. Well, two runs in for Kansas City. Only one out and Dick Hauser comes to the plate. Hauser's one for two on the day. Struck out his last time up. Pasquale deals. How about a 2-5? That's a grounder to short. He'll be taken no problem by Bursell over to Vic Power for the second out. So Pasquale settles right down after that home run by Walker. And he'll face Tartable now, who's 0 for 2. Jose Tartable with the 2-3, and that is a line out right at Allen at second. The final out of the fifth inning. But Kansas City puts up a crooked number, even though it's got nice curves. And it's 2 to nothing athletics as we head to the sixth. A brief break. Or a sip of soda. 
And we return to your Strat Baseball History Bowl game, folks. 1962 staring us in the face. The Kansas City Athletics lead Minnesota 2-0 as we head to the 6th. Jerry Walker pitching above expectations thus far. He'll face the heart of the Twins lineup, who are trying to get it even. Rollins, Killebrew, and Allison. Rich Rollins, 1-2 for two on the day. Ready for Walker's pitch. It's a 5-6. And Walker loses him. Rollins lays off and takes the walk down to first. That makes the tying run Harmon Killebrew with nobody out here in the 6th. Walker takes a moment. Gets his composure and ready for Killebrew, who's 0 for 1 with a walk last time up. How about a 2 6? Well, he loses him again. For those of you following the Strat broadcast, this is Walker's point of weakness inning. One more hit or walk, and he will be tired and have to be removed from the game. What's worse, though, is he's got runners on first and second with nobody out, and Bobby Allison coming up. Allison, a good hitter with power. The Twins trailing 2 nothing, but they've got those two runs on the bases if they can cash them in. Walker deals to Allison. That is a 1-5. That's going to be trouble. A double 1, single 2-20. to 20. That's going to be a base hit. One run will score. As Rollins comes around from second, Kilbrew ends up on third, and Bobby Allison has himself an RBI base hit. It's got the lead to 2-1, to one, and that is going to be it for Walker for Kansas City. No. Can't fault him. He pitched well through five, but here in the sixth, he got into trouble. And Kansas City will have to go to the pen. They are going to look at their options and go with Dave Wickersham. Wickersham, a competent pitcher, gets a lot of innings. He's a pitcher one for POW. And let's trade him out here on the screen for you. Just to keep everything going, we go from Walker to Wickersham. At least we can keep the W there. So Wickersham takes his warm-up tosses, finds himself on the lineup card on the screen, and he's ready to try to head off this Minnesota attack. First and third, with Earl Batty coming up. Allison's a C stealing. They will hold him on. They don't want both runners in scoring position, and they're trying to keep the double play in order. Wickersham deals to Batty. 1-7. That's a good thing they did, folks, because that's going to be a 5 to 4 to 3. Double play, doubling off Allison. They allow Killebrew to score the tying run. And suddenly it's 2 2 with two outs and nobody on for Bernie Allen. Hookersham deals to Allen. A 1 3 grounds out to second to end the inning. But Minnesota comes right back, scores two, and evens it up after five and a half. 2 to 2 with the Athletics coming to bat. Asquile's still in the game for Minnesota. He will face the heart of the Athletics order, Lumpy, Seaburn, and Simoli. Here's Lumpy, 0 for 2 on the day. How about a 2-7? That's a grounder down to third. Handled no problem by Rollins. Over to Vic Power for the first out. Here's Seaburn. 0 for 1 with a walk on the day. He'd like to get something going. 3-2, he hits this ball hard, but right at Power at first for the second out. Power didn't even have to move. That one just seemed to magnetize into his glove. So Gino Simoli will come up 0 for 2 himself on the day. Two outs and Pasquale. Feeling pretty good about his chances right now. 6-8. Fly ball left field. Killebrew roams over. Takes care of it. A 1-2-3 inning for Pasquale and the Twins. And they will try to get their offense going in the 7th. Will be the bottom of the order of uh, Versailles, Pasquale, and Green. Here's uh, Zoilo Versal leading off against Wickersham. How about a 5 6? That's a fly ball to center. One down. Pasquale, who has a base hit on the day and is pitching well, stays in to hit for himself here in the seventh. 
How about a 410? He just missed a lot of base hits. Instead, he's going to fly out to center. Tartable handles this one for the second out. And it comes back to Lenny Green, who's one for three, singled his last time up. Wickersham deals. How about a 111? Pops this one up on the infield. Seaburn over to take the uh, to take the pop up, and that is the final out of the inning. We go to the bottom of the seven, still tied at two. Kansas City will send up a Lusick, Charles, and Sullivan against Pasquale. Camillo is ready. Georgia Lusick is ready. One for two on the day, and he is ready to swing the bat. Five, six. And he does. Triple one to two. Single three to twenty. The base hit to lead off the inning for Lusick. He's on at first. Not much of a runner. But he'll give Ed Charles a chance to hit. Pasquale would love a double play ball here, and that's how the infield's playing. What a 5 7. It's a ground ball to second. Possibilities abound. Allen's a 2. We roll a 20. That's an out, but Allen cannot turn the double play. He's going to have to take the out at first and allow Elusic to advance. The ball was hit too slowly. And Allen knew it. So Elusic, the go ahead run, moves into second base. And Haywood Sullivan comes up. Pasquale with the pitch to Sullivan, 4-3. That is a grounder down to first. Vic Powers, a 1. 8 on the first base 1. Would be a double play. Instead, it's going to be a 3-1. to one. And Elusic, for the second time today, moves to third. With a pitcher due to hit. He's not a good pitcher. Uh, reason Wickersham's not an 8. He's a batting 1. So... Despite him only going two innings, in a tight ball game, they're going to have to try to cash this run, and Wickersham is going to come out for Kansas City, and we'll find a pinch hitter from the bench. Wickersham out after two innings of work. The pinch hitter for the Athletics. I mean, Causey is a possibility. Well, it's going to be a formidable pinch hitter in John Wojcik. Wojcik limited play, but has a nice card. 474 on base, 302 average. You can't use him all the time, folks, because we do have limits here to 110% usage. But Wojcik here wants to cash in this run. The Athletics are ready. Pasquale deals. But a 5-7. That's a grounder to second. Allen again a 2. We roll a 6 on the chart. Allen's going to handle it over to power for the third out. And once again, Lusick is stranded on third base. No run scored. They leave 1. We're still tied at 2. Ojik will find himself a seat on the bench. And we're going to have a new pitcher. For the athletics. Let's see who they've got available. It's a tight game, so they're going to go to John Wyatt. His second game in a row means he'll be ineligible tomorrow, but... They need to get him in the game. Another W for the uh, Athletics today. He's a POW3. Do a quick edit on our scorecard here. And your Athletics scorecard is now correct as Wyatt. Thumbs up, he's a batting one. He'll be batting ninth in the Kansas City lineup if it comes to it. And he's going to have to face the two, three, four hitters from Minnesota here in the eighth. Power, Rollins, and Killebrew. Vic Power, over three on the day so far. If he has better luck against Wyatt, a 1-6 is a base hit, the only single in that column. The power's on. He's a C. Since he's a 1 to 12, they're going to hold him, make it a 1 to 10. Try to keep the double play in order here for Rich Rollins. 1 8. 
Now there's a single two asterisks. So right away, Athletics defense is in trouble. Rollins on first, Power on third. They're going to have to bring the infield in against, of all people, Harmon Killebrew. Wyatt tenses. Pitcher's out of the stretch. He's on the rubber and into his windup. And here's the pitch to Killebrew. That is a 6 9. That's a home run on Wyatt's card. Home run 1 to 9 or a double. Killebrew's going to do some damage here, one way or the other. That's a six. That is a three-run home run for the future Hall of Famer, Harmon Killebrew. Power and Rollins score ahead of him. And the Athletics' worst fears have come to realization as they now trail 5-2 to two in the eighth. Kansas City still nobody out against Wyatt. And here's Allison. How about a 5-8? He comes right after Allison gets him swinging. Allison was looking for that close pitch there and didn't get it. The umpire calls him out on strikes. And here's Earl Batty with one down. How about a 3-9? Lofted to center. Cardable over. Takes it for the second out. And here is Bernie Allen. 0 for 3 today. He's a 4-4. Flies out to center. Cardable again. Takes it easily for the third out. But the damage is done. Minnesota... Puts three up on the board on Killebrew's three-run homer, and they now lead 5-2 to two as we go to the eighth. And Pasquale is pitching well. He'll face the top of the order. Hauser to lead off for Kansas City. One for three on the day. They need Dickey to get on base to get something going. Well, he does. Hauser lined one up the middle for a base hit. They're going to have to hold him close, and here's Tartable. Pasquale deals. 1-7. Pops him up on the infield. Infield fly rule call. Power roams over and takes it for the out. One down with Hauser on first and Lumpy do up. Lumpy over three on the day. Pasquale with a 4 8. Pasquale gets Lumpy swinging. 1 2 3. Wasted no time going after him there with this lead. And there's two down. Hauser still at first and Cybern do up. 0 for 2 on the day is Cybern with a walk. Pasquale to deal. About a 1 7. That's a double 1 to 5, single 6 to 20. It's going to be trouble. It does get down, it's cut off quickly. But Hauser gets over to third. Cybern on first. And there's two men on with two out for Gino Simoli. Pasquale doesn't get tired, folks, unless he gives up a lot of runs. He's a 9 inning pitcher, if he has any say in it, so. You expect him to try to get out of this jam. He pitches to Simoli. Uh, sorry. 2-7. Single 1 to 16 or a line out to third. That's a 17. That's the line out to third base. A lucky roll on the 20 for Pasquale. The percentages go against the Athletics, and that is the final out of the eighth inning. They cannot score. They leave two stranded. We're going to have to do it in the ninth with the bottom of the order or some pinch hitters. If Wyatt can hold it where it is, against Versailles, Pasquale, and Green. Zoilo Versailles comes to bat 210. He's a real renaissance man, but this time he pops out to short. Pasquale coming up one for three on the day. You know he wants to pitch that ninth inning, so he's going to hit for himself. 5-5, five, five, down on strikes, he's okay with it. He just wants to go out there and think about how he's going to deal with these athletic hitters in the bottom of the ninth. That brings up Lenny Green. Green one for four today. How about a 112? He lines this one right to second for the third out of the inning. And he pulls up on his way down the base path. May have pulled something. Let's see. An eight. Means Green's going to miss one game. So he's going to have to come out. And they'll find a new center fielder. Lenny Green. Looks like he may have twinged something running down to first there. Who's going to come in and play center? Or, excuse me, for Minnesota. Whoops, put him in the wrong pile. Don't do that, Bill. We'll never see him again. They'll keep Green. 
don't think it's a trade. It's going to be Bill Tuttle. Filling in on center for green. It's a center field two. Well, they don't lose anything defensively. Having green out for one game beyond today. So Tuttle takes over in center. Pasquale returns to the mound. He's going to have to deal with the bottom of the Minnesota order, starting with George Alusik. Alusik, two hits on the day, been stranded a third twice. One of many stranded Kansas City base runners. Pasquale's gotten into trouble. He's gotten out of it. This time he's going to get Alusik to fly out to center. Testing Tuttle right away, but he makes the first out. Here's Ed Charles, good hitter. One for three on the day, a double and a run scored. He has to get something going for Kansas City. Pasquale deals 3-10, grounded right back to Pasquale. Over to Vic Power for the second out. And that's going to bring up catcher Haywood Sullivan. Sullivan, three ground outs on the day. Let's see if there's a pinch hitter. Better than Sullivan on the bench. I have to get something going. Now they're going to bring up Manny Jimenez. Jimenez expected to get some playing time for Kansas City this year. He's a 301 hitter in 479 at bats with 11 homers. There's two outs here, so a homer won't help them. It'll cut it a little closer, but they just need to get men on base, and we need to note Jimenez as the pinch hitter. Otherwise, we'll be like, who was that guy? And then the stats get all screwy when you're keeping them by hand, and you don't know what's happening, guys. Pasquale settles. Two outs here in the bottom of the ninth. The Athletics down to their final out, and they need Jimenez to get on base at the very least. About a 110. Well, that's a line drive, but it's going to be caught at second by Allen for the final out of the game. A 1-2-3 inning in the ninth for Pasquale. He will get the complete game victory. Gave up two runs in nine innings. Nice game for him. Minnesota with a final score of 5-2. to two. The loss will go to Walker, who pitched pretty well until he got in trouble. Uh, and that is going to be our ball game. Uh, let's see. Who's going to be the player of the game for Minnesota? I think it might be Pasquale. Um, Caleb got on base three times with the homer. Yeah, Camilla Pasquale is going to be our player of the game. The complete game, two-run, awesome performance. How many hits did he give up? One, two, three, four, five. Seven hits. The big mistake, the home run back in the fifth inning to his counterpart, Walker. He was just pitching strikes, folks, throwing it down the middle, and the pitcher took advantage of it. But in the long run, Minnesota comes out on top five to two. Thank you for joining us for the evening game today on the Strat Baseball History Network. This is Joe. Reminding you that two games a day is our goal. There should be a 1 p.m. release and a 7 p.m. release every day of the week here in the 1962 replay. At least until we start mixing in a computer replay to go with it. So I hope you enjoyed the game. Remember to hit the subscribe button and follow us on www.stratbaseballhistory.com to follow the complete 1962 season. It's been my pleasure to host you in Kansas City this afternoon. Until next time. Keep playing ball and stay safe.